Today is a UEFN tutorial on decals slash stickers that you can place on objects in your map to set it apart from other creations. Let's get started. We're going to make it short and sweet, but we're going to go slow. All of these decals and paint splatters you see are things I created and placed within this speedball map that I have. So if I toggle G to show my devices, you can see that every piece of paper here, that's what it looks like to select as a piece of paper for your decal, is individually placed by myself, and I made the paint splatter in Photoshop. It's nothing super impressive, but it saved me so much time figuring out how to do this. So the very first thing we're going to do, this is going to be our canvas we're going to try our stickers on later, is we're going to have a folder here in our content uh, browser, just so everything's organized. I have mine labeled decal test. So once you have a brand new empty folder for your decals, the first thing we're going to do is click on add here and we're going to actually have a material we're going to click on. So now we have the material. You can name whatever you want. I'm just going to hit enter and just let UEFN name it whatever they want to. And the next thing you're going to want to do here is go and find the PNG logo that you want to use. I'm going to use um, my logo, which is like the skull with the drumstick crossbones behind it. So I drag and drop right there. So we're going to double click the material we just created. It's going to bring up this uh, material window. The first thing we're going to do under material domain is select defer decal. Right under that for blend mode, we're going to actually select translucent. Once that is done, we're going to click on our content drawer on the bottom left here. And we have the decal that we drag and drop in recently that we want to use. We're going to drop it right into here and release. The very first thing, connect RGB to base color. And for the texture sample, which is labeled as A, as an alpha, we're going to drag and drop over to opacity. We're almost done here. What we're about to do next is what's going to eliminate doing this every single time for a, do, uh, for a, for a new decal, essentially. So we're going to right click the texture sample convert to parameter. It's going to by default have param there. We're just going to hit enter. So our parameter is called param by default. Hit enter. We're good to go. We're going to hit the floppy disk and save this asset. Once that is done, we can close this. Now with this material that we just created and exited out of, we're going to right click and we're going to make it a material instance. So we're going to select create material instance. Once that is done, it's going to make us name it again. I'm just going to hit enter by default. You can name it whatever you would like. And now when we double click this material instance, this is essentially our decal. The reason why we saved it to a parameter and this is by default and named it param is so we can change the decal later by drag and dropping a new image into this. But before we do that, we're going to close this and I'm going to show you that with this material instance, you can drag and drop it onto your object within your map. Now you, you usually always have to mess with um, rotating it once you first place it. Mine is usually 90 degrees. So I'm going to do that 90 degrees and then make it upright 90 degrees again. And then we're going to actually scale it down to fit the size of the trailer side. So now we can move the decal around, which is cool. It does kind of form to different textures. If you can see here, it does form over the bumps on the trailer here on that trim. Now, by toggling G to show all devices, you're going to see the piece of paper here and you're going to see this green box outlined it. These decals actually have a thickness to them. Okay. So if the object is very thin, you will have clipping of your decal on the backside. So to eliminate that, as long as it's a flat surface, curved surfaces get a little tricky with the thickness. You're going to have to mess around with that with curved surfaces, but for a flat surface, we're going to hit R here. And we're going to take this red box and just make make it as thin as we can to where it's no longer clipping through the backside, which is pretty cool, right? So we have the decal there. And now, for example, you want to make another decal, but you don't want to go through all the steps again. So we're going to right click the material instance and we're going to duplicate it again. You can name it whatever you would like just for the video. We're just going to hit enter. Whatever UAFN gave us for the name is what we have. So with this material instance, this is how we're going to duplicate. I'm going to drag and drop a different PNG image that I want to use for a new decal, which is my chicken knife here, which is one of my Twitch emotes. Now with the one we just duplicated, the material instance that was just duplicated, we're going to double click this. And this is why we saved it to param 
but we are messing with um, the new material. Do you remember when we right clicked and we saved it to param by default? Once we select this with a check mark, anything we drag and drop into this area will be our new decal and we don't have to go through all those steps again. So I'm gonna take that decal I wanna use now, drag and drop it right here. It is now a chicken uh, material instance. I'm gonna save with the floppy disk here, close this window. Now we have a material instance here that is now my chicken email and I eliminated going through all of those steps again. So I'm gonna place it. Um, as always, like I said, I usually have to rotate it 90 degrees. Um, I'm not sure what I'm looking at right now. It's so big. I'm just gonna scale it down first. So I'm gonna hit 90 degrees. I think it's sitting, sitting flat. Yeah, so like I said, the angles can be a little weird to get the right orientation. It's usually 90 degrees up or down, left or right. I'm gonna scale it down again. You can see that is a pretty thick decal with that green box around it. We're gonna press R drag the red box until it's very slim and bam there we go hit G to take away the piece of paper and now we have custom decals now the thickness does get a little tricky like I said on a curved surface or a very thin surface if it's a curved surface and it's very thin it will clip through the backside let me show you so I have this gnomes PNG if I can select the decal here you can see the gnomes is moving up and down you can see that it is on a curved surface. So as long as it's thick enough to reach the end of where the decal is on the curved surface, you'll be fine. If I press R here and I make the really green box, the thickness box shorter, you will see it barely shows up because now it is super thin. It's not even going to read out correctly. So I can go ahead and press R again, make the green box a little bigger. And now the logo fits here, right? If it's super thin, like this concrete tube is, you are gonna have clipping because you do want it to fit the curve on the outside. But if the inside is hidden, I wouldn't worry about clipping it. If that's a problem, I don't know how to fix that yet. Basically, that's how you do custom decals. Of course, follow you know the TOS with what you can put in your maps for decals because you can essentially import any photo, but there are rules to it, obviously. So keep that in mind, but that's how I did decals. Um, shout out to Z over on my stream for teaching me this on my live stream. A viewer on my live stream taught me how to do this step by step. I think it really gives the creator a little bit more of a personalized feel with this. And I've used it in all my maps since then. So thank you guys so much for watching. Supporter creator P-I-Z-Zero and we'll see you nerds on the live stream. See ya.